Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right, guys, we're officially recording week 17 of T Bradley 90's uh, new member orientation webinar. Uh, definitely want to talk about some stuff today. I'll talk about some of my trades as like I told you last week. I'm trying to save some more charts so you guys uh, can just have exact examples of what my thought process was or what I do or whatever it is. But we can open this up to a general discussion. I can just, you know, start a rant on a couple things. But what do you guys have questions on? Let me first ask that if you are a member write at the bottom of the new member channel. If you're not a member, join, and then you can write at the bottom of the new member channel. But uh, right now, the stocks in question are, in fact, let me open this up. I'll show you the two I traded today. Uh, CLBS, let's go to style, to Bradley 90. Yeah, so these were the two I traded today. Um, does anybody have some questions to start, or I can just kind of start talking about my trades and kind of like what I thought. Who's got, oh wow, CLBS, look at this zombie. Yep, not not a big enough breakdown, man. That did not trap enough people. Damn, that's nasty. Wow, that's people that chase short under VWAP just got smoked, man. And CLBS has some nice range to it, so you got to be careful with stocks like this, man. This has some, I mean, one candle could be 30 cents, you know? <clears throat> How'd you guys trade today? Did anybody fuck up royally today and just wants to, you know, I can call you, I can uh, call you out a little bit and we can understand why. Like, who wants to uh, <laughs> be in the limelight today? Anybody? Or should I just talk about my shit? Cedric, how'd you, how'd you do today, man? I know we talk about your charts a lot. Oh, Zeb, talk to me, bro. Talk to me. What'd you do, man? What'd you do? I'll give it a shot. I didn't trade. Oh, you didn't? Okay. Well, you know, there wasn't two, there wasn't amazing, amazing, amazing setups to trade today. So if you missed, man, that's okay. Now, the, the, the notion, the you know, the antiquated notion that you guys have to trade every day is unbelievably like false. You guys do not need to trade every day, man. Let me tell you that the majority of wins come from just stalking like a freaking elk, man. Oh, you, you did? Oh, yeah, I can roast your trade from yesterday. I think we talked about this. What was this again? Was this CLVS? Yeah, this, so CLVS real quick from uh, yesterday and then Cedric, er, and then Zev, we'll get into that. Yeah, no synth pop. Dude, I was pissed at that. We'll talk about that next. But let me, uh, let me just uh, wrap up uh, Cedric real quick. So Cedric, yeah, yeah. So let me, uh, let me pull one of these up, actually. Oh, NSYS. I'm waiting for it, man. I might get in if this fucking breaks five. I swear to God. Dude, if this, if this breaks five, it, it, it's going to go to four. I swear to I feel like it will. So I don't know. If this breaks five, someone yell at me. I, I, might, need to, I might need to throw in a short on my other monitor, but... <laughs> Shit, I wish I could stream it for you guys, but fuck it. I, I, I'll probably won't. I, I need to focus, but. All right, where am I? I need to. All right, I detach this. I'm all over the place, man. I'm, all, I'm still watching stocks. So, all right, Cedric, let's talk about CLBS. So, yesterday, what, you, what was your trade? Oh, you got in at 555. Okay, what I did yesterday is I wanted, I wrote, I actually wrote an outer line exactly right here. So I'll just show you kind of what I was thinking. If you stopped out a little early, you know, that is what it is. I'll just tell you what I was thinking. But <clears throat> here's the thing about outer lines. Uh, by, by the way, mind you, this is a day three, and I do not like playing day threes, man. I've made this very uh, clear in the past for new traders. Uh, if you're new or trying to find consistency, man, stay with, stay with day ones and day twos. Day threes are tough, man, because... They run further than you think because day two is, is the day where all the selling pressure usually kind of bleeds out of the hot air balloon. And then day three is just kind of like, it's kind of no man's land. And usually like a pumper gets behind. It's tough, man. But if you were to draw your lines, here's, here's a trick that I like. So if it got smoked on day two, right? I like the bottom 
especially if it's a long journey. This is one of my favorite things. So this is exactly where I put my line yesterday. Unfortunately, I missed it because I was focusing on other stuff. But the point is, is this is just a really good resistance level because it's the bottom of the pre-market. And specifically, if it's a long journey back, it just acts as a serious resistance. It's kind of like a consolidation point right here, like the middle. See how it's just kind of like the middle of like this little range right here where a lot of volume was at the high of day yesterday. So again, man, like day threes, I give it a lot of room. If you're, if you're jumping in like right here, that's, that's arguably usually a good setup. But here's the thing. That's usually a good setup on a day two because that's not exactly an inner line for a day two. That could be red to green, you know, it could be whatever. But this is not so much of a long journey for a day three. So that was kind of like one of my, you know, one of my starting points to just, just try to help you there. And also, you know, this stock has a lot of range, man. Stocks with a lot of range tend to jump a lot farther than you think. So like even me, had I started in yesterday at like uh, what I thought was, you know, 580, it still went up to 591 and that would have been almost a perfect entry. So my point is, man, these things, these things rip, dude. And like even six could have been like where you wanted to go, you know what I mean? But it didn't reach it. So obviously scaling comes into play. But you did start a little bit early, which is which is okay. It's it's admirable. I mean, it, it happens, man. But if you have a little bit more discipline and patience to wait for these just much outer desired lines, which I usually go for like right here. And I like to get as close to whole and half dollar numbers as possible, specifically whole numbers. So I usually scale 20 cents. Um, had I really paid attention to this, I might have scaled 580 through six with a stop out of six. Again, I'm totally huru right now. I didn't hit this. So I just, I just didn't hit it. I didn't bank on this or whatever. But the point is, the point remains is that's what my plan would have been because day three, especially when it's kind of like upper mid range, you got to understand it's not down here. It's not like bag holders all the way down here. It's, it's not a crazy, crazy, crazy tank off highs. So this has room to come back and make a serious move. I hope that's clear. But that's, that's for that. And now look at this fucking thing, man. See, that's the point. That's the point. Because it's not down here and just dead in the water and there's bag holders from six to five to 450. I'm saying that's why this held up and is still continuing up, man. This thing is just, it, it, the trend is still somewhat intact on a multi-day runner, so to speak. And who knows how far this thing can go, man. This is a real company, in my opinion. CLBS is not Clovis, man. I've been trading them for six years, man. This is not a just true, true piece of shit. As you guys can see their stock chart, like it's not just down from left side to right side, right? Where they never hold their gains. It's, a, it's pretty in depth, man. Uh, don't go crazy and don't play inner lines on a real company, especially something that didn't get absolutely slaughtered, slaughtered from day one or day two. This was still kind of intact. So that's, that's just my two cents on it. I wanted to harp on that because I thought it was a really good example, but whatever. Yes, my scent today, man, that was a, uh, Fuck, I was so bummed, dude. I literally thought I was going to get nothing out of the gate today. I really did. And I had a line. So let's pay attention to what I was paying attention to on Scent today. Unfortunately, it didn't make it. But if another example like this comes up, what are we pay paying attention to? I teach this every single week. Lines, areas of interest, triple top, baby. Where are the tops? Where are the fail zones? What you want on a stock that is breaking down is not to chase this fucking thing. What you want to do is short right back at the fail zones if it can make it or at least start scaling into them. But this is what I wanted today. I wanted to scale. Where was it? I wanted to scale. I wanted this area though. But see where the tops are? I drew this line because that's perfect if you can wait for that. But of course, it didn't have much. Uh, it didn't have, God, CLBS really going. We'll talk about this in a second. Um, the point is, is this didn't have too much volume in the day. It just died out pre-market. And sometimes when things just completely die out pre-market, they're not going to pop and they're just going to disappoint you. But man, I really, really wanted to scale, uh, within basically this full area. So it is what it is, man. You know, I missed it today. Of course, I know James shorts pre-market every day, so he nailed it. But you know, if you don't short pre-market, it's really, you can't nail this because you can't chase down here, man. It's just, that's not a move. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a non-volume drop that you could just so easily get squeezed. So again, you know, what do we do each day? We wait for our outer lines or we miss. A miss is just a miss. It is not a loss. When you lose, then that's where you start really beating yourself up. 
So again, I missed this today. I have no problem with it. I'm a little bummed it didn't pop up, but I'm not that bummed because while you know I was stopped crying over spilt milk over here, I was able to nail a good trade on CLBS today, uh, right here. Uh, let me show you guys. I'll show you my trade real quick. And then uh, Zeb, yeah, we could definitely go into. I want to. We can actually. Let me go on that through before I talk about mine. So let, let's talk about this. <laughs> I'm all over the place, man. So what happened today, buddy? You borrowed APDN. Oh no, bro. It was so fucking expensive. <laughs> tell me, dude. You tell me. You all right? Didn't want to get in in the ten and twelve in pre market. Oh no, bro. 484 if it holds. Be careful. And it's yeah, for sure. Uh, here's the thing, though, man. It's like. Dude, it, if you if you reserve this and you didn't get any of it, Zeb, what can you do, man? Honestly, because here's what happens, bro. Honestly, look at this. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna completely make you sound fine, dude. If you borrowed this and missed it, dude, I probably would have done the exact same. Look at this, dude. You want to wait for these levels. You want to wait. Like, where are they? These are the tops. These are the tops, man. There, there's really like two top regions. Like, think about like Mount Everest, right? Like, where are the tops? That's a major top. This is a major, you don't want to hit down here or even here. You want to wait for these really outer lines. And specifically when this thing is fucking skipping dollars on people, 15 to 20, you cannot be early or you better be sized down to the hilt or to the cigarette butt that you can weather a move from fucking 15 to 19, which I would never recommend. So again, it's like you got to wait for these outer lines. So here's what happens. When you don't get these outer lines, how the hell are you going to chase down here, you can't do that. You can't do it. And then, of course, nobody can predict. I mean, yes, you can predict an offering, but you can only predict a potential for an offering. Nobody knows when it's going to happen. It could be pre-market. It could be intraday. It could be after hours. Nobody knows when the, the offering is going to happen. If for, for any of those that are not familiar with offerings, uh, they diluted and you know raised into the company, and this is just a trend. This is absolute death to longs. So, I mean, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? What are you going to do? Wait for this pop? And, I mean, you can technically as an offering is just the end of a stock. But, man, like, I don't know, man. Like, you don't want to be chasing down here. So, I get it, man. It's not like you did anything wrong today, man. It's just kind of one of those headbangers that we always have to kind of deal with in trading. Like, I don't know anybody that nailed this, not one trader. So, if you did nail it, fucking bravo. But you're ballsy, risky, a bit of a gambler if you did, and uh, not patient. So, <laughs> yes, yes. If you would have nailed this today, man, you basically would have broken your process. I can almost guarantee that. So the fact that you borrowed and didn't necessarily play it, dude, I, I can commend you for that, man. That's no problem. I didn't hit it. I didn't. I wasn't gonna pay that borrow fee. And second, oh wait, you did? <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> Oh, nice. All right. Well, you chased a little bit, bro. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. You know what? They're, uh, after the offering, bro, you can, like I said, like it is the death of a stock. So sometimes I chase these depending if you can get a bounce out of it, but it just, it didn't bounce as much as you wanted, huh? That was like a nice little relief kind of pop, but I mean, that's nice, man. I thought you didn't get it at all. No, that's good. I mean, you caught a move in it. You caught a move. still holding, huh? Yep. Yeah, I, if I had this, I, maybe I'd swing it tomorrow. I don't know. That's a tough call. Maybe I would. I'd swing a little bit. I'd cover today a little bit and then swing a little bit just because, I mean, the whole move is over, man. Look at where it originated. Look at where it came back to. You got what you needed. <laughs> 188 a share. Bro, how many shares did you put on this thing? <laughs> Jesus. That was crazy. 1400 holy shit someone do the math real quick dude you spent a fortune nah, i love it man but you know what when opportunity is there bro i totally understand so yeah 2600 bucks for real so look man when opportunity is there it's there you'll probably make a little bit more than what you reserve for so again you know sometimes brokers are going to stick it to us but if it's worth it i guess it's worth it man you have the balls to do so yep 100 percent if this would have literally popped up to like nine, I would have, I would have borrowed whatever it would have cost. I would have borrowed double that. <laughs> yeah. Look, man, shorting is the cost of doing business, man. It's so much more expensive. Oh, hold on. NSYS. What, what do we got? What do we got? Hold up. Oh yes. I'm getting in. Okay. Hold on. Break. All right. I want this a little bit lower shit. 
All right, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to test this a little bit. I'm going to throw on a little bit. That was sick. That was so sick. Oh my God. Don't follow me. Don't crowd the trade. <laughs> oh my God. I'm already up. Oh, Trying to give this goddamn webinar, but I got to make some cheese. Oh dude, this thing is so done. Oh my God. All right, hold on, guys. I'm short a little bit. I will risk some money on this, man. I will risk some money on this. If you are long, do not be long, man. This is just nasty, guys. Be careful. Be careful. I may swing some of this. It is a low float, though. You got to be careful. Again, go small. I'm protecting morning gains. I would never go even a quarter of what I made this morning or what I used this morning. This is end of day. You know, this is just end of day stuff, guys. Be safe. I would never recommend following me in something like this, but I was kind of waiting all day for this. So I'll give it a little bit. If I lose, I lose. But again, that's the point is you size down to a level to where you're still good from the morning. So you're not going to regret it. That's the whole point of trading is it's basically – size based on time of day and i don't usually op i don't usually open up trades in the last hour but i do like this i think after apdn and the offering people are just too scared to hold this overnight we'll see i'm gonna go for a little bit we'll see what i can do actually yeah can you guys see i shorted right there i got right about there i think i have a what do i have <clears throat> Let's scale this a little bit. I hope it pops a little bit. Damn, look at CLBS, too. That is insane. Look at this, guys. This is just nasty. Did you guys see this? Nobody be, better be shorting CLBS right now. That is just carnage. Please, please, please be safe. The thing, the thing about it, guys, is like, do you want to fight trend? Do you want to fight a multi-day runner? It's just... It's why would you do that to yourself? You know what I mean? Here, let me scoop this over a little bit. Actually, let me scoop this over a little bit more. Can you guys see this? Dude, this is just, you don't, you, this is making new highs after like, what, four or five days. Just be careful. Yeah, the thing about NSYS, the thing that I don't love about it is the fact that it is such a tiny float and these things have been known to rip back, but Man, after an offering's in the air, it's so unbelievably hard for longs to be ballsy on things, and it's and it's uh it's really it's really tough. So I think I'm in the uh, I'm in the 80s. I would risk about probably five ten on this trade. In fact, I could literally just set my hard stop now. Add up to five, risk five, maybe five twenty. I'm I'm not sizing into this. It's just too late day. It's too end of day. <clears throat> but I can monitor both. So does anybody else have some questions, man? Cause I can, I can, I've done this for so long. I might like my stops in, I can literally talk to you guys and just monitor this on the side. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, let me show my trade on CLBS. Did I show it? All right. I do, do, do one second. Where's my 15 day? Boom. So, Here's what I was thinking, guys, today on CLVS. Let me pull up my trade. Now I can talk about my trades today. So this is what I traded today on CLVS. You know, Alex was hitting the six line. I, I just felt like it wasn't low enough, so I wanted to hit. I mean, I felt like it wasn't high enough, so I wanted to hit the 615. I wrote in chat here. I even wrote it out. I said... Waiting for, you know, look at the time stamp. This is 639 my time, Pacific Standard Time, right? So this is uh, 939. I wrote out, I'm waiting for NSYS under six. I'm waiting for CLVS around 615 and KDM, KDMN around four, which I don't even know what it's doing. I didn't even pay attention to that after. But the point is, is I wanted 615 because of two things. I'm sure you've already guessed it when you know my level of play or what I look for in a multi-day runner or anything of resistance on a low hanger. The outer lines, where are the tops? Where are the tops, right? So 615, I pretty much top ticked it almost. 
There we go. NSYS is still looking weak. Let's see. But these are the tops, guys. These are the top. Again, it's like, where are the tops? Top. Top. And like I said, I always go to the base of the candles. I go to the base of the candles. I don't like the wicks. So I'm waiting for the bases and I'm putting levels right there. So I just, I freaking nailed it today, man. That was, that was the point, but it was, it was premeditated. Like it was planned. I wasn't winging it, you know, as it was going up, you know, a couple people were shorting six. I thought it was a little bit early and I had waited specifically for 615 because that was what my plan said. That was what my process entailed. So again, is every day, no matter what you're doing, are you focusing on your process? Are you doing the things that work? Does that make sense? Uh, hold on one second. All right. Got a little bit covered on NSYS. I'm gonna ride two thirds now. Actually, how much did I get? Yep, cover a little bit. All right, so the point is, guys, let me go back. I know we're trying to focus on a ton of stuff right now, The uh, but this is nasty, man. I I'm going to chase that any day of the week with small size specifically. I don't care what time of day it is. This thing is fucking dead. And after an offering, man, people are not going to hold this thing overnight long. They are just not. So now this thing is, dude, 430, man. This could go under four today. This is just, this is ridiculous. This is, this is ridiculous. That's just nasty. All right, where was I? <laughs> I'm all over the place. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm trying to trade here. I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to teach you guys what's up. Uh, let's see, what else did I trade? Uh, NSYS earlier. So let me point this out, guys. Let me point this out, seriously. This is very important, very important. This is a really good lesson for you guys. Something that I learned from Alex about three years ago, and I've never looked back on it. I think it is one of the most important things you can learn. So when we were, guys, pay attention to this. This is so freaking cool. When NSYS was running this morning and it was up and we were like, oh my God, what's this going to do? Is it going to be the next APDN? Is it going to, is it going to be crazy? Like, is it going to blow people out of the water? Like, what the hell, right? The reason why we were willing to short this, even though it was a micro float, was yeah, they had the offering. So people were going to be scared going into NSYS, but also simultaneously, it wasn't blasting off to like 10 and 15 like we thought it could in the morning. So when it's not blasting off to 10 or 15, what me and Alex talked about, you know, this was our plan together, is what did we want? We wanted. One second, let me try to put a fantasy cover in and another one. Hold on, let's see if I can do that. All right, fantasy covers are in. <laughs> where was I? Uh, the point is, is where is a good level to short if your level comes, right? So what me and Alex were thinking is, dude, if because this is not blasting off, because the offering's in the air, if this goes under every single intraday long, this is going to be a death line and bleed, bleed, bleed. So guys, this is huge. When a stock is up and it's not jumping or running as much as it sh quote unquote should, right? This is a nano float, could be the next APBN, it could go to 20, blah, blah, blah. When it's not doing that and it breaks this exact level, what is it here? I'll, uh, where am I on? Five, eight, three minutes. This is the level that every single long intraday specifically, pay attention to this, intraday, when intraday longs are underwater, it is going to most likely cause some selling pressure. Those are intra, not pre-market, those are intraday longs underwater. What happened? It broke. I got in immediately, covered some lows, and then just piecemealed out and added on a couple pops. But the point is, is like, that was our plan. Under six, we thought that this could really go down. And it did, man. And now look at this fucking thing. So, you know, again, guys, this is just process. This is pre-planning every single day. There's certain levels above or below that, you know, is bullish or bearish, depending on where you are. And again, you know, we just try to teach you how to stay safe daily because that's really all you can do. And that's all your process can entail. Does anybody have any questions? I've been rambling. I've been going on and on. How's everybody doing? You're not, you're not following me on this trade, are you? <laughs> yep. 
yeah, easy to borrow on low float, man. You want to be very, you want to be very careful. You want to be very safe. You want to, you want to do it quickly. You want to nail and bail. It's a, uh, yeah, man, just be safe. I can't trade for you, but I can tell you to be safe. This thing is still pretty weak. I got some covers in. Let's see. I don't think I'd add now above five though. That's the only thing. I because it's not like tank, tank, tanking under the under the five line. I don't know. I probably wouldn't add back. So I've got a decent little average. I'll probably just set a hard stop for the remainder, and then uh, and then let's see. And then I'll call it even. So if I lost on the hard stop now, this is what I do, guys. This is what I do every single day. I already got in. I already paid myself on the wash. Now, if my hard stop gets kicked out at what five ten, now I'm break even on the trade. So whatever I just did is as if I never did anything uh, to start because I already made money on it. You cushion yourself and then you set a break even hard stop on the rest so that you're just stress free, man. I don't care. I just walk away and not give a shit because it's like I never took the trade anyways. This is called padding. This is called padding. So let me put this hard stop in. Padding for the flight simulator, let's see. 510 would about make me break even on this trade for the rest. Let's see. One sec. Market hard stop, guys, that is the key. So the thing about market hard stops is, so stops in. So literally anything can happen right now and I'm solid, like literally anything. So market hard stops are a way to keep you safe if you guys are not familiar. So say you short right here like I did, you, you get like, what did I get right there? I think I shorted about exactly right here. Uh, I covered a little bit right here. Market hard stops, where are they? Like. That's about where my hard stop would be. The point is, man, if this thing just really came back and saw me back like crazy, you want it to be automated and you want the system to kick you out because, dude, if this goes back all the way to like freaking 560 and 6 and you're a deer caught in the headlights and you don't know what to do, you're screwed, man, because these are low floats. And, and if you put a stop limit, then you're probably not going to get triggered out. It's going to keep going. You can't leave your workstation. And then you're royally fucked. So the whole point is making sure it's automated so you guys can always stay safe. It's not about hitting home runs every day. It's hitting singles and keeping yourself safe in the process so that you just are always alive going into the next day. It's like, um, it's like, uh, what's it? Um, the dad from, from, uh, from, uh, Friday, right? Um, I think John Witherspoon, man, he just died. Rest is rest and rest in peace, man. But like, he's like, you know, you win some, you lose some, but you live to fight another day, man. That's correlated to trading, man. That's life advice, but that's trading, bro. You don't want to ever be in a position where you can wipe yourself out in a trade or you're cocky or you're, um, impatient and you're being reckless because of your impatience and things like that. So again, guys, every single day you have to be alert. You got to have risk management under control. You got to have a hard stop in. You got to have a plan of attack, a plan of exit, more importantly. And you just got to do what works and show up and rinse, repeat every single day on what to do and what not to do. So that's the keys of trading. You know, there really is no secret, guys, to trading. You just show up, you grind it out every single day. Or I should say, the real secret is joining MIC. <laughs> but uh, I digress. I digress. Nice. I got a swing long and a big cap, and it's going my way finally. Been holding this thing for a week. There we go. Shit's working out. Any questions? Got oh, uh, Cobra have NSYS easy to borrow. They did. Yeah, John. Uh, NSYS is easy to borrow at Cobra today. Again, shout out Chad. Shout out Cobra. They're unbelievable. Uh, the best customer service in the game. Fucking great locates, man. I just I can't recommend them more highly. It was sick that NS, NSYS was it was such a low float and it was easy to borrow. That was that was that's a that's a rare sighting, man. Like something like this in any brokerage. I don't care who you have. It's just kind of rare, man. It's it's so low float, but it was easy to borrow. That's pretty fucking cool. <clears throat> I 
yeah, this thing is just so weak, man. This thing is so weak. Let's get a cover in here under 420, maybe. Yeah, this just this thing is so weak, man. I don't expect this to come back in any shape or form. If it did, then I, I would be unbelievably surprised. But again, I, right now, guys, after everything, I've got like in a, a '70s average, so I'm solid, right? Like, and I've already cushioned myself mostly. So that's the whole point: is like paying yourself along the way and making sure that you're doing the right things to not only protect yourself but uh, but make some money in the process. I mean, what's the worst thing I have? Break even, dude. Break even is not a problem. If you win and then give give back the rest just because you wanted a bigger move, you're just paying yourself and writing a core. That's that's the best you can do, man. Let's see what they're saying in main trading chat. I want to see what Val's saying. Bit, oh, nice, dude. Austin caught that all out in SYS being a bit conservative, want to play more. Favorite end of day play over extended trend break. Fantastic, fantastic trade by Aloha. That's awesome, dude. Congrats. So sick. So I'm going to add a thread. So sick. Davon caught some too. Nice. Got full size on too. I think he just upped his size. Good job, Davon, man. Holy shit. How many fucking times did he trade that? Well, he kicked, he kicked butt though. So that's all that matters. Who else caught it? Anybody else? Oh, dude. I don't think Val saw it. If I I'm going to text him right now. Hold on. I'm going to text him. He's going to lose his fucking mind. <laughs> He's going to – oh, shit, dude. Watch. I'm going to text Val. Hold on one sec. Oh, no. I don't think Val's at his screens right now. I just put, dude, don't look at NSYS. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let me see if he said something back. He's probably eating pho right now. If, uh... I'm expecting a little bit more of a bleed out. I think this could get under four. I really do. Who the hell would hold on to this man late day, especially going into tomorrow? Are you kidding me? I fully expect this thing to have one more good wash. If it doesn't, I'll just cover up. But uh, I'm thinking it will. And again, guys, it's like you're my tab partners right now. So the point of a tab is to have someone to talk to. Obviously, there's someone else talking on the other line. But, I mean, this is the point is you're just trying to see the same thing. You're shooting the shit. You're talking about your strategy. Hey, bro, I filled it 430. I filled it 450. Whatever, man. But, like, the point is to have some, like, comrades to – and then sometimes you just need to talk it out or vent it out, you know? <clears throat> Yeah, I even said earlier, let's go back. Let's go to the main trading chat. Where? Oh, I said it on my charts originally. I don't think I said it in the main trading chat. I think I said under five, it's dead, in my opinion. Let's see. I know I said that on my chart, but I might not have said that in main chat. Let's see. I said CLVS, man, is an absolute void on the short side, man. That's just two front sides. So, again, man, we're warning members all day. We're trying to keep you guys safe. If you're not a member, it's a great way to learn. It's a great way to have extra eyes to stay safe, things like that. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I guess I didn't call it in chat. I just wrote it on my charts in the beginning of the webinar. Man, Austin killed this trade, bro. That is amazing. That's so cool. I love when our team does good, man. I love when members do good. I love when everybody does good, man. I wish that... Everybody can win, but again, this is the stock market. And every dollar made is a dollar lost. So, you know, some people are going to lose, unfortunately, but the best, you just, just protect yourself. We all lose from time to time. It happens. <clears throat> all right, let's get some kind of wash here so I can close this out. Actually, I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do. So my remaining shares, check this. I'll, I'm going to show you guys an example of something. Let me 
do something really quick and I'll show you guys how cool this is. This is exactly what I do every single day. I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do. Hold on one second. Let me just, let me just screenshot this chart and then get it in the, in the main trading chat so you can see what I'm talking about. One sec. I'll show you guys visually what I'm thinking about. All right, let me screenshot this. What's this? NSYS. One sec. Now you guys can, I'm gonna show you guys so you can see what I'm looking at. <clears throat> and then we'll wrap up this webinar. <laughs> ah, the joys of trading. I gotta get on with my day. I got shit to do. Babies to kiss, hands to shake. What is it, the old presidential thing? Uh, do, do, do. One sec, guys. One sec. I'm like putting it on one monitor to another because I don't have chat on this one monitor. This is just for trading. All right. Got it. Let me put it in main trading chat and we'll talk about it. What I'm, what I'm looking at right now. I can literally walk away from chats. Check this. All right. Let me post in main chat. And posted. All right. So let's talk about this. Let me go find it. So I just posted in main chat. <clears throat> what I did was I shorted on the five break, as you guys can see. Now, I said, I'm writing a core for break even on the rest or a fantasy cover. So look what I did here. So now, if you guys pay attention, I shorted about right here. I have my hard stop in right here. We'll put that on a pink or something. We'll put this green, right? Like I already covered a little bit. Uh, so this is what you're looking at. This is exactly what you're looking at, actually. Everybody following along? I short it right here. About right here, I'm probably off by a couple cents, but whatever. I shorted right here on the break, on the five break, I chased it and I wanted to scale up to this level. Again, on a break like that, it's so convincing that I didn't think it would pop much, so I chased a little bit. It's one of the only times I chase, it's a death line break. So what happened was, is I paid myself along the way. So I paid myself right here. So what this means is I do this every day, I get in, I cover the first wash and then I set a hard stop break even on the rest. So if it goes up here and I lose on the rest, I'm break even on the trade. Who gives a shit? I'm break even on the trade or I get a fantasy home run and now I walk away. So now that my stop is in guys and my fantasy cover, one will hit first, one before the other and then on mobile or if, I, if I'm still here, I can cancel the other one that doesn't fill. My point is, is this is how to trade emotionless. I can literally leave the house, have fun, go get a smoothie, do whatever, um, you know, go see my girl, do, do whatever. And then the trading, it, the stops are doing my trading or the fantasy covers. I've already traded it up enough. I've cushioned myself and now it's time to bomb loose, right? Is what I do every day. This is like the, the T-Valley 90 special. So I'm trying to show you guys this and so you can get a little more familiar, but as you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. So now the rest is, Whatever, whatever happens, happens, man. This was just a fun trade to show you guys, mostly. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Damn, I shared a lot today in this webinar. So not only am I protected right now, I also have fantasy cover, so if it completely goes my way. It's a win-win, man. It's a win-win. I've already made my money today. You size down. Ha. <laughs> No problem, guys. Yeah, I'm actually writing, uh, yep, I'm writing a third. Yep. So actually, even if I stopped out on the third, I'd probably be in the money a little bit. I'm not doing the math exactly. 
But uh, yeah, I'd probably still be in the money a little bit, like I'd make money on this trade. So that's the point, man, it's just staying safe. It's emotionless, as you guys can see. You get in, you set risk, you set fantasy, you walk away. That's it. That's it. If the zombie's back, the zombie's back. If it doesn't, boom. I've already made my money today. So this is just, this is just, you know, what do they call it? The cherry on top. <clears throat> mm. I don't even usually watch stocks this long. I set my hard stop and now I'm out of there. So I don't change my mind. <laughs> I have a tendency to change my mind just because, man, nursing a position all day, you will literally just drive yourself crazy. Why you don't cover the third under your entry by once? <laughs> yeah, man, right? I mean, I could, but I like to, I never adjust the plan that way, Jay, is I like to go even on the trade because I usually have a price target in mind. So like, of course, like I can stay in the money that way, but I don't think on a chart pattern sense that it will go back over 510. I think it could totally go back to my average, but to go back to 510, if it did, this, this could come back. Like the point is, is like, I might not want to be short if it goes back over five or 510. Does that make sense? So I'm, I stick to an original plan. So I'm much more willing to give back some or the profits that I just made because it's just a scalp versus like a big trade. If this was a big trade in the morning, it might be different. But again, right now it's just it's piecemeal. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's just a little bit. But yeah, I play, I'm trying to play the chart, not the P&L. So I try to teach, I try to talk about that every single week of like, hey guys, like the minute you play your P&L, you're not trading what the chart is telling you. You're not like, like, if, like I said, if it's under five, I think this thing is dead in the water. But if it, I don't, I, th I think if it goes over 510, this could have a chance to come back. I mean, over 510, if you think about it, is half of this big death candle, it's back over five whole number, it holds this support that it's kind of bounced off all day. It's a very low float and it's easy to borrow. So if it gets back over 510, who the hell knows doesn't accumulate and launch this? I don't know. But the point is if I were to stop out and set my stop right here and then it goes to five and then rejects and then goes back to three, I'm gonna be pissed at myself, you know what I mean? So it's like getting your mind into what you're comfortable with since I've already, now if this was my first trade on the day, maybe sometimes I'll do that, but I've already made my money here. So this is literally just like I said, like a, a cherry on top or, you know, whipped cream, whatever, whatever on the Sunday, right? Like this is just, this is almost for fun. This was the, this is where I make my money. This is like, yeah, let's pad the wallet. Things like that. <laughs> but guys, I'm not going to make you sit through this dead silence this whole time. So how about this, man? I'm totally exhausted talking. Uh, I'll post my chart at the, I mean, well, you guys will just see, you know where my stops are, you know where my fantasy cover is. We'll see if this turns into like basically a double scalp or a almost just like a break even trade with a, probably a little bit of profit. So that's the whole point. I just kind of wanted to show you guys a different style of trading. It's kind of like prop firm trading where you protect yourself and set, and then you can walk away, man. You can literally walk away. Just monitor it from your phone. So I hope this was a good webinar today, guys. We talked about all the different trades two different trades, a live trade. Uh, I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Let me show you how to contact me. Uh, let me show you. Oh, nice, nice little drop there. All right, it's still weak. Let's see, break under 420 and I will definitely most likely get that cover. Uh, at a, what is it? At 394. Uh, so guys, if you have any questions, if you're a speculative member, we go through this stuff every single day, email me. Uh, I will help you. I will get on the phone with you. We'll sign you up. Jay, yeah, of course, man. Uh, everybody, thanks for coming, man. I love doing these weekly. I'm glad you guys got to kind of see a live trade today. That was funny. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ralph. Thanks. Elos. Elos. I'll try to have some new Tory Lanes for you guys next week. <laughs> Frank Forty, what's up, buddy? Thank you, man. Yep, so whatever happens, happens, guys. You know where my levels are. I'm going to walk away. I'll probably go get a smoothie to end my day, and uh, I'll just let the stops do my trading. I'll monitor from the phone. See you guys.
Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.